I've always thought that waking up at 5 a.m. was a bit excessive. Why interrupt a good night's rest if it's not necessary? I mean, even the sun isn't up at that hour. Talk about defying nature's clock. So why should we? Any time that I've ever had to wake up at 5 a.m. has been horribly unpleasant, almost torturous. So then why would I choose to do it? And do it for 30 days nonetheless. Have I lost my mind? Well, no. It's because my friend Marissa from the channel A to Zen Life asked me to do this challenge with her. But if she were a true friend, then she wouldn't have asked me in the first place. I mean, my dad always told me, just because your friends jump off a bridge doesn't mean you need to jump too. So why'd you make me jump, Marissa? But it's a good thing she did because the results have been absolutely incredible. And I know these next words may be totally overused on YouTube, but the whole experience has been life-changing. And I don't know if I'll ever go back to waking up later again. Okay, let's rewind. It all started about a month ago when I began my typical morning routine, or should I say lack of routine. I woke up like I usually did to the sound of a crying baby. And no, of course I didn't set an alarm. The baby was my daily alarm. So after I grabbed the baby, I then sit on the couch, groggy and angry because well, mornings, you know, and I put on my favorite TV show, Gilmore Girls. Okay, I know, who watches TV at 6 a.m.? Well, let me answer that for you. Um, sleep deprived, time to self deprived moms. We do all sorts of crazy things. Boy, don't you know I got something going on. Needless to say, I had some bad habits and I wasn't proud of them, but I also didn't have much motivation to change them either. I enjoyed them in the same way I enjoy eating straight out of the ice cream carton or sending my husband 30 memes within an hour. It makes me happy. But you know what happened next? Marissa happened. She DM'd me asking to do this 30 day wake up challenge. And I'm like, uh, okay, sure. It's only 30 days, right? What's the worst thing that could happen? So the next morning I got up at 5 a.m. and put on Gilmore Girls and- Turn that off. Huh? Turn off the TV. Why? Ow! What is this? The the miracle morning. So I opened the pages of the mysterious book that was thrown at my head, and I realized something, something very bad. Not only was I to wake up early each morning, but this this book wants me to wake up with, with intention. Ooh. Oh, just that word makes me want. Okay, so basically, The Miracle Morning, which was written by Hal Elrod, encourages you not to just wake up and do whatever the heck you want, but to wake up with a purpose. Don't look at your phone first thing in the morning like most of us usually do, but use that time to pray, to enjoy the silence, to exercise, read, write, visualize where you want to be, to do something purposeful. But. I searched every page of this book and not one page mentioned watching TV. So I told Marissa, I'm gonna need some time to think about this. What she's asking me to do, to, to give up? I, I'm gonna need a minute. So after I consoled myself, I decided I would join her. For the next 30 days, I planned to wake up at 5 a.m. and I was gonna do it with intention. No more Gilmore Girls, no more unhealthy 6 a.m. snacking. I plan to take Hal's advice and wake up without checking my phone and to start my mornings with a period of silence instead. Literally nothing but the sound of my coffee slurps. In his book, he talks about how we spend so much time on our phones that we never have to be alone with our thoughts. And he is so right. I don't allow my mind periods of quietness, so I decided to include this into my mornings. Another thing he recommends is a time for exercise. He says that morning exercise gives you more energy during the day and cognitive function. And honestly, I could use more of both of those things. 
and I had actually been wanting to get more consistent with my exercise anyway. So adding that into my morning routine was a no brainer. He does suggest a few more things you can include into your mornings, such as journaling, reading, affirmations, but my baby wakes up at 6 a.m. So there's really only so much I can do in one hour. So I included the extra tasks when I could, but not every day. Okay, now I know you're probably still wondering, how did waking up at 5 a.m. each day change my life? Well, I think it would be better if I showed you. So on that following Monday, I woke up to my 5 a.m. alarm to start the first day of waking up early with intention. And I took his advice. I put my phone across the room so that I wouldn't hit snooze. I made sure not to check my notifications in the morning. I got dressed right away into my exercise clothes. I drank a full glass of water like he recommends. And then I grabbed my coffee and sat down in silence with nothing but my thoughts. And it was weird. Mmm, good coffee. And it's so quiet too. Who's that? I am your thoughts. You haven't met with me ever since you got a smartphone in 2011. Oh my, I gotta get out of here. It was like meeting a stranger. But after that initial introduction, my thoughts and I broke the ice a little bit. Ooh, give me more, that feels good. Okay. Ooh, again, again. And then after that, I found that I actually kind of enjoyed the time of silence. I didn't think I would, but it felt so liberating. It was like giving my mind a chance to stretch its legs without all the usual distractions. I was surprised by how much I liked it. And after I was done hanging out with my thoughts, I then moved on to exercise. And no, I wasn't excited for it. Exercise is rarely fun, but I did it. And then I did it again the next day and the next day, continuing to wake up at 5 a.m. every day. And let me tell you, it wasn't easy. In fact, I hated it. It's like I'm getting progressively more tired with each day. I hate getting up this early. By the end of the week, I was not happy with this challenge. I knew I still had three weeks to go and I was dreading them. Getting up so early was making me extremely tired to the point where I would feel ready for bed by 8 p.m. And I was cranky. I mean, my poor husband. 8 p.m. now felt like 10 p.m. and I was a total grump. Oh gee, thank you, Jordan. Thank you for the toast. How I just love chewing on charcoal. So week one didn't go well. Let's see how week two went. I kept falling back asleep during the silence time. I was even more tired this week where I couldn't even enjoy my quiet time anymore. And on top of all of that, all of my muscles ache so badly from working out each day because I wasn't getting enough sleep to help them heal. Waking up early wasn't working out so well. I mean, yeah, I was now exercising consistently, which is what I wanted, but it wasn't making me feel good. It was just making me more tired. Like I couldn't get through the rest of the day because of the exhaustion. So what is going on? Can I even finish out the rest of these 30 days? It's killing me. Then about halfway through the week, I realized something. In order to wake up at 5 a.m. each day, then I was gonna need to go to bed earlier. I can't expect to survive off of six and a half hours of sleep a night. I was going to bed around 10.30 and that was too late. If I didn't figure out how to get more sleep, then I was gonna be completely miserable. So I started going to bed a whole hour earlier and wow, what a difference that made. The first few days I just needed to play catch up because I was so exhausted from all the sleep I lost. But by the time I got to the beginning of the third week, I started to feel so much better. I could get up when my alarm went off instead of letting it ring for 10 minutes. My muscles weren't so achy anymore. I was able to stay awake and enjoy the silence time. I even started reading the Bible and having a devotional time. I actually had a chance to enjoy my morning instead of feeling like I was hit by a train and just trying to survive the day. So, lesson learned. 
In order to wake up at 5 a.m. each day, I need to go to bed earlier too. And once I started getting enough sleep each night, then my mornings became exciting. I loved having that time to myself. Time without kids, total quietness, total relaxation. I began looking forward to it. I would wake up at 3 a.m., look at the clock, and feel disappointed that it wasn't 5 yet. Yes, I know. I sound insane. Someone lock me up. But it's true. I loved waking up at 5 a.m. And by week 4, my body was on its own clock. I began waking up 5 to 10 minutes before my alarm would even go off. And the best part is that I didn't even feel tired anymore. It was like my body had decided to adjust to this new schedule and embrace it with me. And while exercise in the beginning was dreadful and unpleasant, at this point, I was starting to enjoy it. Getting up early eliminated my excuses of why I couldn't exercise. But now I had this chunk of time available and it was giving me no choice but to be consistent. And through that consistency, I was feeling a lot better. I suddenly had energy that I didn't have before all of this. I felt healthy, strong, and motivated by that strength. And I was able to get more done in the day because of it, which just made me love the exercise even more. I also used that time in the morning to connect with God, which I haven't been good about since my second baby arrived and it's just been such an incredible experience. Like I lost a piece of myself and finally found it after a long time coming. So here I was, getting up at five each day, having a time of silence, reading the Bible, exercising, and just enjoying time to myself each day. But then day 31 rolled around and it came to my realization that I didn't need to keep doing this. I didn't need to wake up at five anymore. It's over. So what I do next? I set my alarm to 5.30. Why? Because I could. And guess what happened? I hated it. It didn't give me enough time to enjoy my morning. I wasn't able to exercise. My baby woke up at six like she usually does and I was mad because I felt like I missed out on my quiet time. So what did I do? I woke up at 5 a.m. for another 30 days, and I have been loving every minute of it. I can't even explain how much better I feel each day. Having that time in the morning without the kids, it's life-giving. It's time for me to actually care for myself, to grow my faith, to strengthen my body, to enjoy the only time of the day when it's quiet, and to feel a billion times better because of it. So. I was wrong about mornings. They aren't the worst. They are inherently evil. I just wasn't approaching them right. And now that I've learned how to navigate my mornings with intention, life has been so much better. And I don't think I ever want to go back to sleeping in again. So what do you say? Do you also want to wake up early without feeling miserable? then you should click here and check out Marissa's video because she did this challenge with me and she has some really good tips for you, okay? You don't want to miss this one. Go watch her and I'll see you later.